Hello everybody, welcome to the second webinar of the University of Sassari. Uh, we are uh, glad to be here with you. Uh, this week you have been, uh, you wonder went like a uh, webinar bombing. <laughs> Uh, with different web webinars to follow. Um, first of all, I would like to remind you for those who are uh, all together in one room to sign the signature papers for the webinar and then send it to me via mail, please. Uh, then uh, um, for this webinar, we decided to organize it in uh, three different parts. And for each part, we foreseen um, 10 minutes of uh, question time. So, uh, if during the webinar you have any question, you just write it on the chat. Uh, I will be monitoring the chat and we will reply as soon as we have the question time. Uh, I give uh, room to my colleague. Uh, Dr. Tonito Sorinas for the webinar and I will be with you through the chat and see you later. Bye. Okay, um, so I will share the presentation with you. Let me start from here. So you should be able to, yes, it's uploading, so you should be able to see the presentation in a second there. Okay, um, so does anybody not see the presentation in the chat? Okay, that's good. Uh, okay, so um, so I, I was appointed to hold also this second presentation on behalf of the University of Sassari. Uh, I wanted to share with you Again, our experience in, uh, in a couple of processes, let's say simplification processes, but also streamlining, and I will explain why in a couple of minutes. Uh, so, um, the, um, uh, the, the agenda today includes, sorry, includes a couple of uh, points. Uh, you see we have a, a brief introduction and then I will try to uh, share with you some information about the different governance systems that uh, are implemented uh, um, in most of the universities we collaborate with. Uh, and uh, we'll also uh, share information about the procedures connected to digitalization and uh, some examples on credit recognition and also the management of the mobility cost from the administrative point of view. And then, um, and then I would like to also to spend a few words about uh, Erasmus Without Paper. It's an initiative promoted by the Erasmus program, Erasmus Plus program, uh, uh, which is enjoying uh, uh, quite a support uh, around Europe, also from national government. Uh, and uh, I will also provide a couple of examples uh, about um, student applications for smartphones uh, and, and, uh, and tablets, but we'll see later. Okay, so, Let's start with the first part. Okay, um, uh, my task was to explore the idea of simplification, and so I wondered uh, what does simplification apply to? Um, in, our, in our context, uh, I would say that there are uh, two levels where simplification will be applied. One is the governance systems and the processes governing the universities, 
Uh, and the other uh, is the, admi the administrative set of procedures and um, the management of those procedures. Okay, so we have two levels uh, of implementation. One is connected to the rationalization of uh, the efforts that we put into our work on a daily basis, uh, and the other is the digitalization. Now, I, am, I keep these two concepts separated because, as you may know, uh, Digitalization, but I mean uh, the use uh, of uh, digital architectures and uh, devices um, is uh, is uh, helps us speed up our procedures and also be exposed to less uh, problems in general. Uh, but um, but it's a it's a twofold uh, problem because. Uh, it may also entail a greater effort in uh, promoting and learning uh, these tools. So the idea uh, at the end of the day is to work smarter and not harder uh, and uh, achieve uh, uh, greater goals uh, with the same amount of effort. So. Um, I mentioned the two ideas uh, at the very beginning, so simplification uh, and also streamlining. Now, uh, in, the, in the 30s, uh, there was a, an interesting movement uh, in uh, architecture and also applied sciences uh, around the world uh, called uh, streamlining. Uh, a streamliner was a, what we call a pallet train, so the, the picture you see here. And the idea was not to, um, let's say, simplify the, uh, the work of a train and to make it simpler. Uh, uh, the idea was to uh, work against the resistance. So the idea of streamlining is also very important to keep in mind because uh, we all work in um, extremely complex uh, scenarios uh, and working at the university is not simple per se. Uh, working at the university can be and is in general a very uh, complex, uh, a very complex uh, set of actions uh, which are also necessary uh, uh, from different points of view to also comply with the requirements that the laws uh, uh, provide us. So we have to be transparent, we have to be fair, uh, and uh, to be honest, in order to comply with these requirements, uh, it's not only a good idea to simplify procedures, but it's a good idea to streamline them, to make them more uh, effective, and to work against uh, all forms of resistance in a way. Um, so, keeping this in mind, we have two ways uh, where we can develop our work. Uh, you, you may be acquainted with the concepts of problem solving uh, and lateral thinking. Uh, and I believe that both concepts uh, should be taken into account when um, we work at the university and we try to develop uh, um, services and, uh, and to be effective in uh, when collaborating with um, uh, our students, but also with, uh, with the universities abroad. Uh, so we need to, to develop our solutions by thinking straight, okay, so vertical thinking, uh, following and complying with the rules, uh, and at the same time we, we also need to, um, to try to develop innovative solutions, not only to solve problems, so it's not only about coping with a, a problem, uh, but also to be more effective uh, uh, as a general approach to the procedures that we uh, that we uh, that we carry out. Uh, now, um, departments, uh, meaning also faculties, because the uh, the approach uh, and and. In the Italian level and also European level is a bit different. So department is also department is also a term. Okay.
Yes, can you hear me now? Okay. So, uh, so departments are basically in this case the the core uh, of the decision making process. Um, uh, now, the decentralized approach uh, is uh, extremely interesting for small and medium uh, higher education institutions because when you take a decision, when you make a decision at the department level. Uh, you are more connected to the actual day-by-day uh, -day, uh, life uh, and um, in a small, medium uh, university um, the, the decisions uh, made by the faculties are easily ratified by a rector or a delegate uh, at the, at the no, sexual level. Meaning that there are some um, uh, some people who uh, are responsible for uh, supporting researchers and professors who uh, who have um, pro uh, programs or projects uh, abroad. Uh, there is also a number of people responsible for accounting uh, and uh, staff uh, at the department or faculty level who uh, try to in a way promote uh, the, uh, the, the participation in international programs um, in international programs and so to they are in the forefront in the promotion of the internationalization of the university. So, um, so this is, uh, um, I, I wanted to, to, uh, to spend uh, a couple of minutes just um, reflecting upon the, um, uh, the activities that uh, we developed over time to simplify and streamline uh, the, um, the processes. Uh, and basically we uh, redefined and redeveloped the organization of uh, the International Relations Office uh, in order to uh, uh, adjust, in a way, the administrative proce procedures to the projects that they do. Wanted to, uh, to carry out. Uh, as you can see, there is a, a first group of people um, uh, who work together very closely um, to, uh, to steer the wheel. Okay? So, the head uh, of the International Relations Office uh, and also the Rector's Delegate for International Affairs, which I believe uh, uh, is called in some of your universities a Vice President. Um, and also an executive manager. Um, just like uh, uh, any of the universities uh, here in Sassari, we, uh, we are divided into sectors, into areas, what we call, uh, and each area has an executive manager who is directly in contact with the general director. Um, now, the, um, it is very important, it was very important uh, for us to make sure that it was very clear uh, what an executive manager uh, for this area uh, had to do. Uh, because due to the reorganization of the universities, we uh, had to, um, to uh, uh, train, basically, and to, uh, and to help learn again. Uh, our managers who were moved from one area to the other. So uh, the definition of tasks to be uh, implemented by each of these people um, uh, was very important and was ratified by, uh, by the governing bodies of the university. So this is the, let's say, the governance level of our area. Uh, and then, because we wanted to develop um, um, uh, office, to reorganize our office based on processes, uh, as I was telling you, we decided to divide the people assigned uh, or hired by, uh, by the office, uh, to divide them according to the people they were exposed to. Okay, so uh, basically we have uh, three staff members uh, at the moment uh, who uh, are responsible for mobility, for 
let's say, students, so mobility for study and mobility for traineeship, um, and uh, which take care of outgoing and incoming students. The, the idea was to uh, make sure that uh, also students had the perceived that mobility for study was not something disconnected from uh, the activities that they were uh, carrying out during their, their university careers. So mobility has become part, fully part of the educational pathway of a student. And so uh, the uh, reason why they go abroad, so for study for traineeship, uh, uh, does not make a I say it does not make any difference in the management of, of the student per se. Um, so, um, uh, as you can imagine, uh, where we, we are a medium sized university, so uh, we um, uh, manage to uh, um, carry out this activity with three staff members, uh, but depending on the flows, maybe we we'll need uh, more or less people. <coughs> now, um, uh, a, uh, a note, uh, a uh, note about the use of words. As you can see uh, in this slide, I use the, uh, the the word traineeship, uh, which we are trying to uh, uh, to keep separate uh, from the training uh, from the training um, um, term. Okay, so when we talk about traineeship, uh, it uh, clearly refers to the mobility of students. When we talk about training, it clearly refers uh, uh, to uh, the mobility of administrative staff or uh, teaching staff. Okay, so in this case, um, uh, being exposed to the same kind of people, meaning professors uh, in general and uh, administrative staff, uh, we decided to, to keep one person, and sometimes uh, there is an additional person to provide support uh, for the management of mobility for training for both uh, individual visits and staff weeks, uh, and uh, for the mobility of teaching staff. Uh, we have, uh, as you know, um, there are some additional programs. So programs in addition to the Erasmus Plus program, which have to do with uh, the uh, uh, replacement of movement of uh, professors uh, for uh, teaching or uh, research mobility. So what we do at the moment is that we try to keep uh, to, to provide support to uh, any incoming or outgoing professor who wants to. Uh, to carry out uh, academic activities. Uh, however, uh, there are some specific units at the university who are responsible for uh, external programs. Uh, for example, uh, Marie Curie grants, uh, this is one, uh, one example, or visiting professor programs, uh, which are not run by the university. Okay, but in, in our case, it proved to be quite, um, um, quite uh, effective to have one person uh, who uh, provides support to, uh, to, to professors and uh, academic and uh, administrative staff. Okay? Now, for the research, for the mobility of researchers, uh, remember that um, uh, we have uh, always the option of uh, visiting uh, a university as a free mover, so uh, basically using research funds assigned to the, uh, to the individual researcher or uh, they can be, uh, researchers may be also involved in projects uh, funded by the university, uh, the national uh, government or the European Union in our case. And I believe the same applies to, to our friends from, from Latin America. Uh, now in this case, as you can imagine, uh, the, 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 the mobilities would be managed by the people who are responsible for the project. So um, as, as a general rule, I would say uh, the, the budgetary office of the, uh, in the central administration and the faculty of the department. 
Uh, now, uh, one thing that we uh, we tried to test on ourselves was the management of funds uh, and uh, basically all the accounting uh, parts of the international relations office. It proved to be very, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, educational for us to uh, develop skills uh, also in, in accounting. Um, accounting settings. Um, so uh, uh, most of the people working at the International Relations Office uh, uh, is literate in accounting. However, for the daily, daily management of funds and uh, expenses and also procurement, um, we, we have decided to, uh, uh, let's say, to um, uh, to have a, a one person, well, two, two staff members at the moment, uh, devoted to accounting, the use and uh, the payment of grants, uh, and also uh, the management of uh, project funds. Okay, so um, we we try to keep everyone informed. So there are training sessions also for people who do not do this on a daily basis, uh, just to make sure that there is backup. Just uh, you know, uh, in any case. Uh, however, there are uh, two people responsible for the management of funds. Um, now, at the department level, uh, this organization proved to be extremely uh, effective uh, because we are a medium-sized university. Some of our departments and some of our um, uh, faculties and also uh, central administration offices are not uh, gathered in one place. Okay, so we have different, not only different buildings, but we also have different hubs, uh, university hubs in uh, other uh, cities uh, around the islands. And so uh, it proved to be extremely difficult to coordinate all these activities without someone uh, based let's say, within uh, the, the department or the faculty. So at the moment, uh, we institutionalized uh, this, uh, this setting. Uh, and at the moment, we have an, a person, uh, a contact point of the International uh, Relations Office, uh, who is usually, uh, I would say usually, paid by the International Relations Office but provides um, support and also a help desk uh, within the faculty. At the same time, the uh, Rector's Delegate for International Affairs decided to appoint uh, professors or researchers uh, at the faculty level uh, to basically to have a direct connection with him. Okay? So we also have a professor or a researcher who is responsible for the proposal of new destinations and also for the management of certain uh, administrative procedures, uh, so at the faculty level. Um, the, there is a widespread, um, there is a widespread, how would I say, um, um, responsibility uh, at the faculty level for the development of international activities. So at the moment we have a committee which is basically uh, Usually, uh, which usually consists of the people of reference for uh, Erasmus uh, agreements at the faculty level, who make up a committee uh, that gathers, I would say, around once a month to um, to approve uh, uh, a set of procedures, but also to develop new uh, actions and to also to try to focus on the involvement of new destinations for our students. Uh, and uh, as I was telling earlier, uh, the, we, we developed a, a network of help desks at the, uh, at the faculty level and we usually try to involve students uh, in the, in the uh, also in the, uh, uh, running of these help desks, uh, so uh, junior tutors, uh, to provide support to both uh, uh, outgoing and incoming students at the faculty level. <coughs> so, um, so this is basically what uh, what we have done so far to uh, 
streamline, to create a, uh, a network of people uh, responsible for a number of uh, procedures uh, in a university. Uh, as I was telling you earlier, uh, the idea to focus on uh, a process instead of uh, the individual tasks of a person uh, is, um, is proving to be more effective. So even if a person is in a way uh, um, trained or more prone uh, to, to manage a specific type of uh, activity, uh, it is, it is uh, proving uh, more effective to have the, that person uh, be responsible for uh, the whole process um, to keep track of uh, the issues and also to uh, find solutions. Uh, I would say that <coughs> also uh, in terms of uh, problem solving and lateral thinking, I would say that involving uh, students in, in this process through the help desk uh, is also helping uh, from that point of view because students um, are not trained to think uh, like a public administration and for this reason they are more uh, sensitive to, um, to administrative problems uh, connected to the procedures. Uh, so, um, I'm wondering whether there are any questions. Uh, <coughs> let's see. Uh, uh, may I ask the question? Uh, Yes. I'm Guillermo Tangelson from National University of Lanús. Yes. So the question is, I was thinking about lateral thinking and all that you, you said, and what happens when the international office is not a priority in the university, and ah. you may have like lateral thinking and all that, but you have kind of a very uh, uh, narrow-minded kind of... Uh, Tips of department and maybe yes. uh, because you know we're all always on the same uh, path of trying to uh, do uh, sensibilization. Yes, and we don't go on uh, on on that matter. And I saw all the uh, the, the the disciplines that you 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 put on yeah. every staff member, but. Think about we are on uh, all the you know, uh, of the department of internalization has four people, so yes. it's hard to match up with that idea. Yes, yes. So, so the first part. Thank you for the question. Okay, the first part of the question is very. Uh, I can share my my own experience with this. Um, so, what happens when we are not a priority? Uh, now, uh, this um, used to be uh, a problem uh, in the past for us, but to be honest, we, um, I believe maybe from one point of view we were very lucky because, um, uh, because during the last, um, I would say, six years, uh, the, um, the national government, uh, in, in particular the, um, the Ministry uh, of uh, Education, decided to develop um, decided to develop the, uh, a different approach for the distribution of funds. So, because uh, a gr great part of the universities in Italy are uh, general, generalistic universities, so we have all the, uh, all the, the most of the faculties, uh, they try to find which, uh, which um, sectors were uh, less uh, widespread and less, uh, in a way, supported, okay? So, um, during the last five to six years, uh, the, there has been an incredible uh, uh, major focus from the national uh, government on the development of international activities. Uh, yeah. uh, of the international activities. So, um, uh, so from 
that point of view, we have been lucky because the government is now asking the universities to uh, to tell the government uh, before they decide um, before they decide uh, how uh, how much money is going to be distributed to the universities. So to tell them which international activities were developed. Uh, so we have become, let's say, popular in a way in Italy uh, during the last five to six years. Um, uh, however, I, I myself, I can share this experience. Uh, I, I'm, I was trained to, to develop some, in a way, lateral thinking uh, when developing projects. Uh, um, because, uh, or because the, in general in Italy we have had uh, a very restrictive um, uh, set of regulations for the use of funds and for the development of activities. So uh, they needed someone to try and, and, and have a different perspective. Uh, so it's very important to, um, in a way, uh, to be available to people because um, uh, at the department uh, level uh, there will be, uh, we, they usually have problems in the implementation of the programs and rules uh, and in a way uh, this constant work of streamlining and simplifying processes is necessary at the International Relations Office level uh, to provide support to them. So, um, we, uh, let's say there was a, a number of reasons why uh, uh, implementing this approach uh, was beneficial uh, and became popular over time for us, but we, we are seeing now that we are being involved also in activities which are not uh, specific for international mobility. Now, on, on the second uh, question, uh, I, I understand that um, uh, that the, the overburden of tasks uh, may be a great problem for people like you who have so few people uh, involved in, in the office. Um, however, I, I suggest that you still uh, try to map your activities uh, focusing on uh, uh, procedures or processes and not on individual tasks. Uh, we sometimes um, uh, we are being trained uh, now and then to also uh, replace our uh, fellow colleagues at the office in, in some administrative procedures. So we have, um, a, uh, in a way, uh, we have um, uh, uh, we have been used, let's say, to uh, to, to exchange uh, expertise. Uh, and to also develop additional uh, skills. Um, but uh, the idea is that when you, uh, when you have a single person that uh, is responsible for a whole process, that person on his or her own will develop a way to save time. Now, once that person develops that specific procedure and process, uh, to uh, to carry out daily activities. Now uh, th that is the time when that experience uh, has to be shared, um, because being few people in a way uh, forces you to uh, to find uh, innovative solutions. Okay, um, so th this is this is our experience. I believe there is another. Uh, Yes, uh, yes, just a few words about this. Uh, uh, Juan Luis Merega, yes. Uh, I mean that sometimes activities are more demanding in some periods of the year. Yes, this is true. Um, but, uh, but it is, uh, yes, for example, the, uh, when we are asked at the end of the year to, um, uh, to, uh, um, to write down basically to fill the cells of an Excel file uh, with the activities that we are expecting to be performing in the following year. Now at that time um, there is uh, each, each process is broken down into steps. 
So what happens is that uh, since the, uh, when you break down your processes, some of those activities are very similar to each other. Uh, now what we, 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 we did over time it was to make sure that before the time we needed to do that activity, we already had, uh, the, uh, we already had the, the paperwork done. Okay, uh, so we, for example, um, uh, in, in uh, mobility programs and, uh, for example, the development of double degrees uh, and also international framework agreements, uh, there are a, a number of, um, uh, of uh, uh, let's say, a number of procedures uh, which uh, have been uh, submitted to the academic senate in our case and the uh, in the board of directors uh, so that uh, the text or the templates of those uh, of those documents and those procedures uh, are approved beforehand and so that we just need to fill a couple of details uh, in them but um, we try to standardize as much as possible. And uh, to be honest, at the moment we have some like 10 departments, 10 faculties, and each faculty has a, um, uh, a, uh, a let's say, a general Erasmus, um, a general Erasmus call, but also uh, reopenings of the same calls. And even if the paperwork looks uh, Great. Okay, so there's a, a great amount of words to be written. Um, the, the the process uh, that we developed uh, seems to be effective. And so now, uh, yes, we, we, we pay uh, we pay due time to do efforts in the development of these activities, but uh, but it's quite standardized, I would say. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. Am I late? I'm not late. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Um, now, uh, now, I, as I was telling you uh, at the beginning, um, we wanted to share some information about uh, uh, digitalization and, in particular, about procedures connected to uh, credit recognition and the management of mobility goals. So, this is a bit. Uh, verbos. I, uh, I put a lot of words here, but I'm. Um, but I feel that uh, when we, we are over with this uh, meeting, online meeting, you you will have more time to check these these details. And I'm pretty sure that the uh, that uh, some of these before and after uh, columns also apply to your universities. So uh, I will I will try to explain to you what we had uh, around 10 years ago and what we have now. Okay, so uh, let's start from the procedures connected to credit recognition. Um, uh, now, uh, the, some 10 years ago, uh, we had faculties, which are now called departments, uh, and every uh, in each of them, um, we used to have 14 of them, and now it's 10, but each of them had uh, its own procedures for the recognition of credits. Now, at that time, it felt at the department level that it was necessary in a way to um, to keep um, uh, the, the steering, okay? So to, to be uh, to, to be the, the ones who decided over everything they had to do with uh, with uh, credit recognition. But it was uh, a long and time-consuming procedure. Uh, for both the students and the administration. For example, the, each professor who uh, was responsible for the mobility uh, approved the, exam, the exams taken by the students abroad uh, uh, without often taking into account that the study program approved at the very beginning uh, of uh, the, the mobility period had to be fully uh, recognized. Okay, so uh, it was very common for the professors to ask for to ask for additional exams to be taken by the students once they were back from the mobility, and it took longer uh, clearly for students to to uh, to have their marks and credits awarded. Uh, okay, then because um, the ECTS the ECTS system was not 
uh, widespread. Uh, okay, I I just remind you that in 2009 uh, uh, we had a first round or a first version of the ECTS. Uh, guide for user users guide uh, and in 2015 so six years later we had a newer version but um, the the conversion of credits and marks uh, from the host university uh, hosting universities to uh, to the home university uh, was a bit complicated and each department had uh, its own way uh, in addition, the students uh, who, um, as you may know, are not always um, trustworthy, okay, and uh, um, uh, they are not excellent administrative uh, staff, um, were responsible for the submission of documents, so uh, for the submission of the request, for the recognition of credits, and for the submission of transcript of records and the learning agreement. Uh, some of them did not bring um, uh, those documents back to the home university uh, at the end of the mobility period, or they left before those documents were ready. So it was a bit, to be honest, a bit uh, of a mess. Uh, and um, <clears throat> and uh, basically, uh, we had to wait as an office to, uh, for the course boards, so for the course panels, uh, the faculties to approve and recognize all the credits. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have one single um, set of rules, so one single regulation, um, which is applied to all departments that makes things uh, extremely easier. For example, uh, at the moment, uh, we tend to develop learning agreements um, so that there is a, a uh, let's say, a box of um, uh, a box of exams uh, which correspond to a box of exams uh, in our university. So basically, if uh, the student takes all those exams and passes all those exams. Uh, Every single exam that corresponds in our university, so in the in the study program of our university, is approved. Okay, so the learn agreement and the transcript of records uh, are fully recognized by default. Very rarely do we have to, um, let's say, to uh, request an integration, and uh, it must be in a way. Um, uh, it must be. Uh, Justified by the uh, by the, the professor, uh, like, or like officially justified by a professor. Uh, now, the effect of the implementation of a single regulation for all the departments uh, resulted in two uh, great uh, benefits. Let's say one is that the number of credits um, increased drastically, uh, and that the students are encouraged and also feel motivated to go abroad because they are sure that if they do what they are asked to do at the very beginning, they will have their credits and marks, uh, and marks recognized. Um, now, this was extremely interesting for us because, in particular, the number of credits recognized, because uh, at the moment uh, there is a, a national fund uh, distributed across uh, the universities in Italy, um, that is uh, evaluated uh, and, and earmarked based on the number of credits earned by the students abroad. Okay, so the increase of the number of credits also had a, a beneficial effect in the, in the budget of our university. Um, now, um, uh, the say I would say also applies to. Uh, Yes, applies to the, the mobility calls that we have at the university. Um, some years ago, uh, the mobility call was um, had to be published by uh, the university department or faculty, and um, uh, and um, it was the responsibility of, of also administrative responsibility to uh, uh, to keep track of each phase connected to uh, the call. And as you know, we have to uh, to make sure that transparency and fairness are always uh, guaranteed to our students and. Um, uh, and uh, this also entails a great uh, efficiency from the administrative staff. Now, uh, each department, um, uh, as you can imagine, 
consisting of different people uh, have its own uh, pace so some departments were very uh, very uh, quick in the implementation of these um, uh, of these calls and some were less uh, uh, less effective um, uh, in that case also the international relations office had uh, a greater uh, had to spend um, more time in the in the collection of data from the departments, uh, and uh, also because the departments had a different uh, selection criteria, and in some cases some courses that we had uh, were also shared by different departments because they were interdepartmental uh, selections, uh, and so um, uh, things also in that case were a bit complicated um, and. Uh, also, depending on the subject uh, and the specific activity of the students, also the language level assessment uh, uh, was different among different departments. So, for in one case, uh, students were required to have a specific level, and in another case, another level. Um, at the moment, um, we, uh, through the implementation of the single set of rules, we also uh, managed to uh, uh, to, uh, to have a single university call approved by the governing body. So at the moment, uh, there is one single uh, call for all the students of the university, and if uh, grants are not assigned to specific, uh, to individual uh, departments or faculties, uh, uh, those grants are reassigned by publishing an additional call. Uh, but, also, but always a call uh, managed by, at the central level. Okay. So the planning of these calls is, is more effective and more efficient at the moment. Um, uh, fairness and uh, equal opportunities are also, um, are also uh, protected. So same selection criteria for all the students. Uh, and also the procedures are more uh, quick in a way. And we uh, managed to uh, also to uh, to have a um, a single process to evaluate uh, language literacy uh, for students in different languages. <coughs> okay, um, so. Um, uh, at the moment, uh, we are we are trying to uh, develop. Well, we, we are we, we have developed, and we are uh, trying to to uh, to, to refine uh, a, a digitalized mobility code process. Um, now, as you can, as you as you know, digitalization is is a is a twofold issue because it gives us the opportunity to be um, um, to be uh, uh, less exposed to errors uh, since uh, machines do part of the job um, and uh, at the same time we need to uh, spend more time and uh, uh, focus more on the training of people because digitalization the use of digital devices and instruments uh, and digital tools uh, uh, is, is something that uh, I'm afraid uh, uh, he's, um, um, uh, he's a skill that uh, is, um, let's say, may be developed, uh, but is more frequently uh, an innate uh, um, uh, quality. So uh, some people are more prone to use digital devices and some are less. Okay, but what we managed to do is that we uh, while before students had to uh, submit two copies of the printed application forms uh, according to the national uh, laws on um, administrative procedures uh, and also be present at the desk to submit these, these forms. Uh, now uh, all our students apply online through the student database. So the um, uh, confirmation of the uh, of their um, identity is done through the access uh, to the online portal and then uh, they submit their application. Uh, students uh, who had to, um, um, students in the past had to in a way declare 
the exams that they have taken uh, at the host university and the departments had to check whether the declaration of the student was uh, was true, basically. Uh, at the moment, uh, uh, student applications are filled in by the system with the personal data and the exams, uh, the exam results. So, uh, at the moment, uh, both of the current uh, examinations taken uh, in our university and um, those taken abroad uh, are uh, uh, entered in a, da in a general database. Okay. Um, uh, now, also students, um, due to a national legislation um, uh, which made it impossible for, um, for public institutions to request the certifications, which is a, a, was a bit of a pain, uh, students had to declare their language level. Uh, so it was a self-certification. Uh, but as you can imagine, uh, uh, language proficiency is something that decays over time, and so, um, and so the uh, inaccuracy between the actual uh, uh, the actual language proficiency and the um, declared language proficiency sometimes it was very wide. So today, um, uh, students uh, through the digitalization process that we implemented uh, are required to take a computer-based language test in order for the grant to be assigned to them. Okay, so. The, the language, the at least minimum level of language proficiency is necessary uh, to, to benefit from an Erasmus grant. Um, also, um, uh, the, the, the <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, the um, the paperwork may, uh, necessary to uh, check uh, the applications and uh, define, for example, the ranking list for uh, the assignment of grants uh, was very time consuming. So at the moment, uh, because most of the procedure is online, uh, ranking lists are generated auto automatically by the system. So there is no, no need to check this, the individual student records to, to see if uh, that is the correct um, uh, ranking list. And, um, <coughs> and uh, while before they had to print basically all the learning agreement and the paperwork, uh, at the moment there is a, a, a pilot uh, online management of the uh, learning agreement uh, procedure uh, for the whole student database. So let's say even if uh, we still request a, uh, a signed paper from a from the public university to confirm that the, uh, that the student actually uh, took the exams uh, there and uh, passed the exams there. At the moment, we, we have a system that makes it possible for us to check uh, the online uh, the online uh, uh, database. Now, this is just an image of something that we have implemented. We have a, uh, a digital platform that is called Self Studenti Unis. Uh, it is a, a platform which is connected to the, uh, the general uh, uh, student uh, administration office. Uh, and it makes it possible for the student to, um, to upload uh, documents and upload information and connect the information they enter with their own uh, records. Uh, so, as you can see here, there is a checklist. Uh, um, there is a checklist, you see the, the green ticks. Uh, so there is a checklist that, um, is, uh, that shows what part is completed and what part is still to be uh, entered. And, uh, as you can see in the red box, uh, there is a uh, there is uh, an alert saying that the, um, uh, the application to the Erasmus grant is completed. Okay, so at the moment, um, we uh, let's say uh, also from from an educational point of view, the, the, we have a um, uh, we have a deadline for the submission of uh, applications, but because most of the, uh, of the information is already available in the database, uh, there is no excuse, let's say, for the, uh, 
for the students to uh, to to be late uh, or to fail to submit and then complain because they couldn't they weren't be able to submit their application. Uh, the this kind of procedure is also uh, available uh, in a in a uh, mobile phone friendly format. So uh, so there it, it is accessible from everywhere. Uh, now, this is, these are some pieces of information uh, about what, what we do. Uh, I, um, I wanted to, to break down uh, the implementation process just to show you uh, what, uh, what we did uh, in the past and to show you that um, uh, following a step-by-step -step procedure uh, may take time, but it makes it possible to implement a very complex uh, scenario also to, to complex university structures. Okay, so uh, when we first started, we, we had to develop a flowchart and analyze uh, what entailed a digitalization process in our university. Uh, and we had to select a, a, a software, basically, that complied with the regulations of our University. I'm pretty sure that also you uh, be mostly uh, um, public universities that also you have restrictions in the use of software. Uh, and uh, so the, um, uh, let's say, uh, the dialogue with the central administration and also the technical uh, units uh, was also very important. Uh, software was selected. Uh, at one point, uh, and the staff had to be trained to use that software, uh, and um, um, we, we also had to request the development of additional uh, database interrogation queries, basically, um, uh, to, to uh, download data and filter data. Uh, and we, um, once we had, you know, the system running, we, uh, we tried out uh, uh, three departments, three faculties, with a pilot online mobility call. And uh, we had to uh, then uh, uh, close the course and analyze uh, the pros and cons. Uh, and uh, the, the process was shared uh, with the staff uh, and additional training sessions were, were organized for the staff. Uh, in March 2008, uh, we were able to, after about one year from the very beginning of this process, we were able to launch a university-wide uh, online mobility call uh, and we have to uh, uh, develop the call, uh, fill in the call and complete the call uh, and develop all the paperwork, well not the paperwork but the digital uh, document work um, to, to check that the implementation was correct. So, uh, for us, it took about two years to implement the system, uh, but we uh, achieved several goals um, doing, in doing so because we, uh, we had, um, uh, because we had to, uh, um, um, well, we managed to uh, streamline the process, making sure that uh, the number of mistakes or errors uh, arising from each call uh, was reduced. We reduced the paperwork, also complying with the national legislation that requires the universities to uh, print less and less. Uh, and uh, and we, uh, make it, uh, we increase the accessibility and transparency of these procedures. Uh, having a single call also shows the students and, uh, and to be honest, also the outside world that, um, uh, that there, are, there is a single approach uh, to the um, evaluation of students when it comes to assign grants and so uh, financial resources to them. Okay, um, so uh, uh, as a result of this process, uh, we, um, uh, we, let's say we had two things to take care of. One was the development of tools, 
Uh, so we developed a guide for the student to explain the application process. Uh, we, uh, we developed a new expertise uh, among the staff and also the students, tutors that we had in the university, uh, in the university departments, and uh, we also had to develop a web app for, uh, for uh, mobile phones and desktops. Okay? Uh, now the, um, we also involved some students, uh, obviously in the in, in the carrying out of these activities. So uh, students gave us uh, the feedback, uh, the uh, what we what we found out, what we declared actually was that the procedure was easier, uh, so simpler, uh, quicker, and more intuitive. Uh, so for them, uh, as you, the Z generation uh, shows us that, that uh, using digital devices uh, makes things easier for them. Uh, and uh, also, uh, also the online procedure is easily adopted uh, as a general rule also by, uh, not only by the students, uh, younger generation, but also by uh, the department. Uh, and uh, we save money uh, in, in, uh, uh, in paper uh, and to be honest uh, I didn't put this uh, in the slide but also in ink because most of the problems that, uh, uh, that are connected with the management of uh, paperwork in our, in our, uh, in our office is uh, archive space uh, procurement of paper and, uh, and uh, toners, uh, ink toners, uh, and also the, uh, the maintenance of all the devices. So um, th there is a, uh, there is a, uh, a major saving from that point of view. Uh, and, uh, and to be honest, we, because printing uh, and, um, and, pro and submitting physical application forms uh, to our office took time. Uh, we also uh, saved time and we made people save time. Um, now, uh, we, uh, from, from the staff point of view, what I can say is that, uh, is that we, we have to pay great attention to the procedures. Uh, that we implemented, so we have to uh, reflect also upon what we did in the past. So there was a great effort from uh, from the administrative point of view. Uh, however, um, even if we need, for example, more training to use these devices, um, uh, the, the 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 continuous training uh, of the staff seems to be uh, also beneficial in terms of. Uh, staff development. Okay, so people uh, we can see that people uh, working in the international relations office exposed to these uh, innovative, let's say, or new procedures uh, tend to have a um, let's say a, a broad-minded approach towards problems compared to uh, other sectors. Um, uh, so, because now we, we are moving to a digital archive, we, we also need to uh, think about new ways of keeping uh, and safeguarding documents. Um, I, I suggest you all to, to have a chat with your uh, local uh, technical unit because um, uh, the, the, uh, having an archive of official documents at the university uh, must fully comply with the national requirements. So, uh, so I suggest that you uh, start to, uh, to understand how to do this also for the specific activities that you do, for example, in our case, in our case, the, uh, the mobility programs. Um, uh, so uh, as, as a general rule, I would say that, uh, that the, uh, the implementation, it took time, but the implementation of this, uh, of this uh, new uh, approach uh, improved the quality and efficiency of the processes that we, that we carry out. Um, okay, I, I believe this is, this is a, um, the end of the second part. And the other part is very, very short. Uh, do you have any questions? I, I'm, 
I try to, to present these things um, uh, to you how, as we developed them over time because I think that the process um, uh, in general is, is the same for everyone. Uh, there are some tricky um, pieces of legislation. Uh, we have the problem in Italy, but I'm pretty sure that you have the same problem in, uh, in your countries, which uh, are not always uh, in line and sometimes they, they clash with each other. Okay, so the idea is to, um, as we developed uh, this new approach, the idea that we had was to safeguard transparency and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, effectiveness. Okay, and fairness. Okay, so uh, in general, if you, um, uh, as we did, uh, you can also request support from your uh, legal advisor from your administrative units. Uh, for the central administration, but uh, we saw that if the focus is um, developing an approach that safeguards the, uh, protects the interests of the administration and also the students, uh, in a way the, uh, the, there, is, there is a way to, to find, uh, um, to find uh, an effective uh, implementation pattern. Um, okay, so I don't see any questions. <coughs> if you don't have any questions, uh, okay. Um, yes. <coughs> okay. So I will go. I will go to. Yes, an example of digitalization from the uh, European Union. So the Erasmus program, to be honest, I don't know if the same is also being applied to the um, South American side, uh, Latin American side, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, the, the Erasmus program, and, and uh, it, which is the result of an EU uh, uh, programming, so the uh, the Erasmus program uh, uh, is requesting to uh, apply to to participate in a in a pilot project uh, which is called uh, Erasmus without paper. Now, um, Erasmus without paper, as you as you may know, some of these uh, initiatives uh, are not fully uh, European um, national countries. National government uh, have um, uh, an interest in promoting this kind of approach. So usually they are co-funded by the European Commission, but also individual national governments provide money to support these uh, these uh, approaches. And uh, it brings together uh, tools and projects which. Um, uh, which uh, promote the foster the digitalization of the mobility processes in uh, higher education institutions. Okay, uh, so uh, this actually uh, uh, came uh, after the um, uh, the, uh, the start, let's say, of our uh, of our program for the digitalization process. Uh, but uh, I believe that this was. Uh, at the Erasmus program level, the result of national interests across Europe, because all the national governments, uh, 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 let's say, pushed a lot to uh, to digitalize uh, these processes. Um, so um, the administrative uh, practices uh, in Erasmus uh, in, in, the, in Erasmus are usually uh, paper based. Uh, but I would say that from now on, what they're trying to do is to have them document-based, okay? So that paper is no longer required. Uh, as you as you may know, and I would like to, to stress this point um, just for one minute, uh, as you know, uh, in most of the uh, countries, um, national um, national uh, institutions like, like public universities, for example, uh, are required to, uh, to uh, run uh, 
G, uh, GPP, uh, so Green Public Procurement. Okay, um, Green Public Procurement is uh, re required by the national law in Italy at the moment, uh, and, um, and sometimes uh, we are not able for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, for you know, issues connected to the actual cost of uh, recycled paper uh, to uh, to tap from those resources. Okay, so uh, what we're trying to do is is um, by replacing paper work uh, paper based workflow, we all, we also uh, try to uh, support a more effective management of funds. Okay. Um, and because not all universities can invest money in uh, paper-based archives and paper-based production, uh, also in that case, an Erasmus without paper uh, is seen as an inclusive tool uh, that, as they say, uh, using the, uh, the famous uh, North American uh, uh, motto, uh, that leaves no university behind. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, so the um, um, another uh, objective of the Erasmus uh, Without Paper program uh, is also to create uh, free public infrastructures. Uh, what does this mean? The the idea is to create an um, and uh, a uh, virtual infrastructure uh, that supports the administrative workflow uh, of uh, documents. Um, so the um, both universities and uh, the end users, so and the students, have a, uh, a an economic financial benefit. Uh, in the implementation, uh, uh, including because uh, access to these services will be freely available to our students. Um, <coughs> okay. So, uh, in order to um, to develop, uh, let's say, to implement this program, um, the the European Commission has developed two basically. To uh, tools, online tools. One is an Erasmus dashboard, uh, which is a, um, uh, a which allows uh, you to manage both the incoming and outgoing students, uh, sign papers, uh, and also review the documents, uh, including the learning agreements, uh, and also to communicate with students and the uh, and the public institutions. Okay. Uh, and the other one is a mobile app uh, that guides uh, uh, applicants to, uh, through a checklist that guides applicants through the, the whole uh, Erasmus procedure. Um, now, there is also a, an, interesting, um, an interesting connection to the, uh, what they say, uh, online linguistic support, uh, which is basically access to language courses. And also through the app, through the web app, they, uh, students can uh, get access to, uh, to free language courses to learn language, let they say, on the go. Okay. Uh, now, I am instead of wasting too much time uh, talking about this, I would like you. Let's see if we can if I can click on this. This link. There is an interesting, there is an interesting uh, video published by the European University Foundation, which is uh, which explain in a very effective way a uh, what I Just give me one second. I will try to to share this with you. Let's see if I can. Uh... OK, 
okay, you should be able to see my to see my um, my desktop. Do, do you see it? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try to expand as much as possible. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, now um, you should see the presentation again. Try to look at what else this could be a good capacity to be in the project. Yeah, now that can be our far from it. OK, 
Okay. Okay, so I want to. Okay. Oh, um, uh, yes, I can. I can see the chat. Um, yes, it could be a good capacity building project. The um, a, a paper office, let's say a paperless office. Uh, in my experience, because we try to, to check other opportunities also. Uh, is something that should be clearly shared by the national government. Uh, in our case, uh, things, even if we uh, are changing um, government with, with a great pace, uh, we change government every year, year and a half. Uh, however, all the, 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 let's say, the last few governments uh, in our country have um, underlined the importance of going green. Okay, so uh, in my experience, uh, uh, if the European Union uh, focuses on, on mobility projects or something uh, in the Erasmus program, and then the national government uh, focuses on something in uh, the national level, it means that something is going also to happen in the ex what we call the uh, external window. Okay, so we need to check. But possibly, also your national governments uh, have already something in place to support uh, the digitalization process and the paperless conversion, let's say. So um, it would be very, very nice if you, uh, if you, if you can check with your um, national contact points for. Or, for the Erasmus pro for European projects or programs, uh, and uh, and you um, uh, and you just request information. Possibly they will they will tell you that there is uh, something going on already, because we've been focusing on this uh, green approach for uh, I would say three four years, uh, but on a steady basis. So I think that there should be something. Um, however, if you are interested, remember that there is a opportunity to collaborate in different uh, different levels. Uh, there are some um, there are some uh, life projects and some um, um, and some uh, Horizon 2020. What well, now? Uh, Horizon Europe uh, programs, uh, uh, which focus on, on environmental sustainability, so that that could be also something to be transferred. Uh, okay, um, let's say yes. Uh, so from from the from the uh, let's say from the European approach, I would like to spend just a couple of slides, and I mean three slides. For three slides uh, on the um, on what we are doing now uh, at the University of Sassari, we developed, being in a way uh, uh, supported but also pushed by the by uh, the, the, the national government, we we developed a mobile app. Uh, for our students to manage their university career, it's a very uh, it's a very uh, user friendly app, extremely uh, extremely let's say agile, okay, uh, without uh, without a great number of functions, but uh, extremely uh, uh, sensible for the uh, for for the students. Um, as you can see, there is a uh, th there are different. Well, it, it's in two languages, so it's both in Italian and in English. Uh, it has a, uh, a calendar, an exam board, an agenda, um, a set of questionnaires, which our students are required to to fill in at the end of the year, an inbox to get in touch with the students, uh, and also general information about the student study plan. And a, a small map, uh, in our case it's a small map, but I believe that in some of your universities would be a pretty large map, uh, for, to, to locate the, the offices and the services. Uh, now, this app at the moment is compatible for, uh, for both Android and, uh, and uh, Linux, 
and we are at the moment, I think, still developing the um, the the, uh, the Apple uh, application. Um, now, uh, there is also, uh, well, this is just uh, some, some details about the app. Um, uh, the, the need to be uh, met uh, was to, uh, to provide a, a student administration office available 24-7, okay? So there are some information uh, such as uh, the university career, the activities, the credits and also available exams, sessions. Uh, which uh, which are um, always at the disposal of the student. Uh, students usually in our university have to book uh, a um, they have to book they to register for an exam. Let's say so they can do that also. Uh, and uh, as a university, we uh, sometimes um, uh, inform students about uh, official uh, official documents requested or communications. Uh, and so they also receive them through the app. Uh, and at the end of the year, just like in most of the universities that we collaborate with, uh, in, at the end of the year, uh, each student has uh, to evaluate uh, the professors, okay, and the teaching activity uh, enjoyed during the year. Uh, this is something compulsory, and, uh, and they may do this also uh, from the app. Uh, we also developed a second tool, which is called Unis Horario, uh, which is a, a schedule, basically, so a, a, a time board, okay, uh, for um, for the, the the lesson, so the classes timetable, um, and uh, it offers also a configuration, uh, a, a general description, let's say, of the of the course. Um, it displays the weekly classes uh, and also um, uh, it also offers the classroom availability in real time uh, in order for the professors and the students to use classrooms which are not currently used for lessons. Uh, okay. Uh, now, so these two tools um, are, have been developed on a, uh, let's say, on, on a um, um, stem from the, 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 the individual spirit of a couple of persons. Uh, so it was something, it was not something that was developed uh, over time uh, as a result of a uh, general, of a, of a central administration programming, but it was the, um, an opportunity for some of the members of the administrative staff to uh, to, uh, in a way, use their personal expertise in uh, uh, app development and also uh, uh, educational management. Uh, and uh, it was very much welcomed um, uh, by the university uh, governance and it was then institutionalized. Okay, so um, these are two tools uh, which, uh, as you know, can be found uh, for free or paid uh, in any uh, in any uh, app store, okay. So the kind of function that they have is very is very uh, common. But uh, I would like to underline that it was the um, the perception from an individual member of the staff that something more had to be developed for the benefit of students. And I think that uh, this is also the result not only of a um, uh, let's say of the, the uh, top-down approach that uh, we usually have in this kind of activities, uh, but uh, it was the individual uh, effort of the people at the university, uh, from, so from a, a, a bottom-up approach. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh, yes. Two two questions. One about the. Uh, the frequency of updates for the application. Uh, there is a, a group of people, um, I think at the moment it's three of them, which take care of the general um, information and, uh, and um, 
dissemination activity of uh, the university. Okay, so they manage the website, they, they manage uh, uh, the um, uh, social accounts, uh, and also the posts uh, on uh, on uh, um, the, the general website of the university. So they, they develop content, but and they also publish content. Um, what they did basically was to uh, connect uh, the, the posts from a specific area of the university website, which is the general area available to everyone for uh, official communications, um, to connect it to the application. So they don't really update uh, the, the application uh, if uh, not in terms of security. Okay, so there is a, a person in the in the administration who is responsible for digital security, and he is responsible also for that um, that part. Uh, but the information is updated uh, as you update the website of the university, um, and uh, the, the cost for developing the app, as I was telling you, actually it was. Uh, Almost, uh, almost uh, free of charge because most of the the work was done by people already working at the university, uh, and they just have to um, to to pay, I believe, for the uh, for some uh, uh, basic architecture of the app for the application and. Um, uh, and the security of the application and possibly. But I'm not sure. But possibly they also have to pay to uh, promote the the application. So um, it was it is a very cost effective tool uh, as long as you have someone uh, in the administration who is uh, skilled uh, in this kind of activity. But uh, but again, the, the important thing is that um, um, uh, the, the important thing is that uh, this is uh, an example. Uh, of how effective can be the personal involvement of people and the and the um, and the uh, motivation of people uh, when you allow them to also uh, develop their own projects. Okay, uh, so the idea is that uh, is that we can, as administrative staff, wait for the uh, managers. To provide all the um, uh, instructions to implement uh, our activities, but some of the job, and I would say some of the of the uh, good results, are achieved when people are, in a way, encouraged to also provide their own expertise for what they love. Okay, so this is something that I would like to. Um, uh, I would like to uh, to underline uh, sharing the app with the friends of the consortium. I believe this is possible. Um, I also believe that um, that uh, um, yes, I believe that the architecture is open source. So uh, if you if you provide us with the uh, with the details with the contacts of your uh, uh, colleagues. Who may be interested in that? Uh, I believe that that is possible. Um, yeah, I will get you in touch in any case with the with the people responsible for this. Oh yes, yes. Um, uh, one one um, of the things that I would like to suggest to you, uh, but this is just on a personal note, so I will. Pretend that well, no, let, let's do this. So the presentation is over. Okay. So this is just on a personal note. Uh, I would suggest you to to get in touch with the um, uh, with the uh, student associations. Uh, we found out a couple of years ago that um, some student associations were developing apps when apps were extremely popular. Uh, they were developing apps for their own uh, members. 
Okay? And uh, some of them could not uh, carry on the activity for the development of the app because they didn't have the resources or the platforms to use to, to develop them. So, um, I would suggest uh, that in order to develop a uh, tool that is suitable for your uh, student population, that it's a, I would suggest that you involve students who are highly motivated. So students who are involved, for example, in, in associations. So in our case, for example, uh, the, um, uh, we do have at the moment students uh, enrolled at um, the uh, um, uh, digital technology uh, university course, which do not develop the specific applications like this, but uh, they, they are, you know, they, they love the idea to do that. Uh, and and uh, those involved in students' associations are usually uh, extremely. Um, um, they, they look for something easy and integrated with the tools that they use. So those can give you a, a, an extremely interesting feedback if you want to develop a, a, some specific uh, applications for your university population. Because what I can say is that uh, the only thing that matters is that people use it. Okay, so if you develop something that is very cool and very, uh, you know, have thousands of functions, uh, it might be a great investment from an uh, administrative point of view and from a governance point of view, but people will not use that. So I think that this bridge between you and them could be, could be also filled, this gap could be filled by the student associations. So this is what I, I, I feel that I can share with you. Okay, so I don't see any, I don't see any, or no, so someone is writing. Okay, someone is writing, thank you, so it's, <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, okay, if uh, you don't have any, anything to ask, uh, maybe, let's see. Is someone writing? Hi, Eduardo. Okay, I'll give you just like a minute if you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so I give the floor to my colleague just to wrap up, okay, and uh, and um, and I hope that this was at least a bit useful to you. If you have any question or if you want to share some comments, uh, or maybe if you want to talk uh, about how you're planning or you're developing your international relations office, we can we can get in touch. Um, it's um, for us uh, being a university that is being reorganized, uh, currently reorganized. Um, uh, it's very interesting also to see how you, on your side, perceive uh, the idea of uh, simplifying or streamlining um, streamlining procedures. Okay. So, so thank you, everybody, for your attention. We hope uh, it was useful and interesting for you, our webinar. Uh, and uh, what else? I remind you again, please send me the signature papers as soon as possible. And uh, in the next few days, we will send you a mail for your feedback. And of course, we will work on sharing all the materials on the DEEP project website in the very near future. Thank you again and hope to see you soon. My best regards to everybody. Um, special regards to the colleagues that I had the chance to meet and know during the study visit in Pisa and for all the others uh, that I didn't met yet. Uh, I hope to have the chance to meet you in person as well. Thank you again and bye-bye. Uh,